A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 139th episode of Together for Education webinars brought to you by Notebook. About 18 months ago, in April 2020, when the pandemic had just started setting in and schools had closed down, we at Notebook felt it was our duty to set up a platform for educators to connect on, discuss problems we are facing with the rising need of digital education and online learning, and arrive at common solutions. Today, 138 episodes later, this platform has grown much bigger than we had anticipated, all thanks to your love and support. It has now connected with over 1 lakh educators till date. We have discussed extremely curricular topics like digital learning and NEP, extracurricular topics like sports and school management, and even more evolved topics like mental health. Today, we look at something that is an intrinsic part of the school education system the parent-teacher relationship. It is well known that the child's education is best served when there is synergy between the classroom and home. However, individual thoughts and biases often overshadow better judgment, and friction has been seen at times. Today, we explore what these expectations are on both sides and see how best these expectations can be managed. Our first speaker on this topic today is Mr. Philip Barrett. Mr. Barrett retired as the deputy headmaster from the illustrious Doon School in Dehradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions. Mr. Barrett served the Doon School as Housemaster, Head of Department, Dean of Activities, Dean of Student Welfare, Deputy Headmaster, Second Master and Acting Headmaster with great distinction. He also carried out a visioning exercise for the Doon School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. Mr. Barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at Wellington College UK in the year 2000. He is also an athlete, an adventurer and an actualist and we at Notebook are privileged to have Mr. Barrett as a senior advisor. Sir, thank you so much for making the time to be here today. Over to you. Thank you very much, Shabayo. I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Perfectly. Thank you very much. I, I fully agree with you when you said that uh, it's a triumvirate of uh, parent, teacher and child all working in close you know, um, in, in cooperation and in, in, in unison uh, for the child. And whenever this, this, all these three work together, I find that, that success levels are high. But when even one of them is out of sync, uh, then trouble starts to creep into the system. And the more open that the parents and the teachers and the kids can be, uh, the better. Um, because when any two people or any two parties uh, are in communion or in contact, there's bound to be expectations, whether this is verbal or non-verbal. We all have expectations of the other person, no matter who it is. Um, unfortunately, uh, sometimes there is high expectations, very, very high expectations of people. And if it's very high, that sometimes leads to disappointment. And uh, it also puts a lot of pressure on the person from whom things are being expected. Um, if you expect less, if your expectations are too low, it leads to lack of motivation. It has been seen that when parents and elders have poor expectations of their children, the children don't perform. Similarly, um, successful people, successful children are those who they know their parents expect a lot from them without, of course, overburdening them with that expectation. It's like the self-fulfilling prophecy. If I expect you to do well, you will do well. If I expect very little from you, you will underperform. Um, I think all expectations depend on good and honest communication. <clears throat> there should be no ambiguity in our expectations. I have seen that when <clears throat> expectations are clearly defined and laid on the table, generally things move smoothly. <clears throat> we teachers expect from parents and parents have expectations from us. The problems usually arise when these expectations are not voiced, not spoken, or are simply, you know, unachievable, unrealistic, unre unreasonable. Generally, the biggest challenge would be trying to convince parents that their children might have talents other than what they expect or they, you know, believe their children to have. Now, not everyone can be the engineer and doctor uh, and the successful businessman that they uh, it, it, they, they think their parent, uh, ch children are. Sometimes a child maybe, you know, have, you know, he have a talent or she has a talent in dram dramatics or music. 
And I think it is this unrealistic expectations of their children that put a lot of pressure on children. And I think the task of the teacher is to very gently balance these expectations out. Now, many parents have already checked out their children's future, chalked out their children's future, um, and uh, without delving deeper into what the child likes or what the child is good at. And I think teachers have to communicate this, this faulty expectations. Now, I think the expectations of a day school teacher are slightly, or a parent, sorry, are different from a parent and teacher in a, in a residential school. In day schools, it is very, very uh, heavily weight on marks, college admissions, sports teams. Can their kids get into sports teams? A lot is on safety and travel. They expect the school to look after safety, especially when their ch children travel to and from school. Also, they expect the school not to hike up fees every so often. In residential schools, where you know the teachers are the look in loco parentis almost of the children, uh, their expectations are far more, and there's this feeling that they pay more, so they expect more, and um, they expect their children to be kept safe. Safety is a big thing in in residential schools, and uh, we must be fair and honest and take care of their children. That's what they want. We also they also believe in a holistic education, which is why they sent their children there in the first place. And they also want to be kept in the loop when it comes to children's punishments, illness, poor academics, and discipline. When, when parents sitting very far away from their child are not in the loop and not, don't know what's happened, or if they're told by another student that their child is in hospital, didn't they know? Then they start worrying because they expect to be kept informed. That's what they expect. Sometimes parents get too close to teachers at residential schools. And they expect their children to be treated differently and um, with special attention. And they may ask for unreasonable favors. You know, the, my, can my child go on exchange? Can he become a prefect? Can he become a sports captain? And here again, it's up to the teacher to, to firmly you know, say yes or no. Now, in my experience as a teacher in a public school for 30, 35 years, I found parents to be very honest, fair, and open. Uh, they did not expect too much from their child. Um, they, they expected me to be fair and firm. That's what they wanted me to be. And they knew that I was in constant touch with their children. Whenever they phoned me in the evening and nobody picked up the phone, they liked it because they meant, that meant I was in the house. I was with the boys. If I was able to pick up the phone, it meant that I was not with the kids. I believe we are facing some technical difficulty with uh, Bharat sir's connection. Ochan, can you just confirm it's uh, at his end and something that I'm not seeing at my end? Yeah, Shubayu. So I think there's some uh, issue with Bharat sir's connection. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just give us a couple of seconds. We hope to have him reconnected very, very shortly. Sorry for inconvenience. Uh, from the looks of it, I believe Bharat sir had a power failure, but he is connecting back. We'll just give it a couple of minutes before we move on. Welcome back, sir. I believe uh, there was a bit of a technical difficulty. If you could please unmute yourself. A big power failure here. So am I back on line? We can see you and hear you fine. Yeah. Can, I, can I continue? Yes, please. Yeah. So, you know, as I said, what they wanted of me was to be in constant touch, to be firm and fair. 
There was an episode once where I wrote a rather uh, mediocre report on a on a boy whose parents expected to me uh, me to to give him a glowing account. And uh, the headmaster called me and said, "Could you change this?" And I said, "No, I don't want to change this account because this is the way I know the boy." The boy subsequently got some glowing reports from other teachers, and he made it to a college in the states, only to be rusticated for some indis some, some indiscipline which I had foreseen. And the boy was back in India within four months. And the parents, of course, came to me and said, "You know, you were right on the boy, and we were wrong." So sometimes parents have to trust the people who have worked with their children for more months in a year than they do. Um, in Dune, the biggest expectations that parents that, that we have of parents is that they follow school rules. Parents make pious promises that they will toe the line, uh, but having read the school rules and having got their sons into school. they will do everything to flaunt these rules they'll slip in cell phones they'll slip in money and i fought a losing battle often because after getting their sons into school they wanted all the rules to change and that's not what we expect parents to do um we also were a secular egalitarian school that believed in simple frugal living a simple frugal lifestyle yet they wanted special foods they objected to tough midterms they thought it was uh, you know very very draconic to get up for morning pt in this century they didn't want communal bathing you know so they have their own expectations which tend to come to the fore only after their children have joined school and many of these issues have been addressed communal bathing stopped um, midterms automatically became easy when roads went further into the hills so where in 1970 we started that trek at masuri today you start your treks much further because the roads get much further now parent teacher meetings are a time when you know parents and teachers can make their expectations very clear very transparent because they want honest feedback of their wards behavior motivation discipline and uh, i think teachers should be well prepared for ptms i think that parents expect teachers to be well prepared to give them some hard facts and a few pointers not always negative they like to hear something good about their kids and then you know something where their kids can improve what parents don't want or don't like generally are teachers who are not prepared for a parent teacher meeting and and come up with statements like can do better has to work harder is not working hard enough can do you know can improve these are very vague statements which show the teacher is not prepared for the parent teacher meeting and i think this is a good expectation from parents it keeps us on our toes um we need to tell them how they can work better we need to tell them what is it that he lacks in the in the motivation what methods are we going to adapt to increase his marks they want to hear some concrete stuff now I I had a parent a parent once who wanted his son to speak fluent English something like a BBC news reader but they never spoke any English at home the whole family never spoke English at home the boy only spoke English in school and so I told the parent that your expectations are unreasonable unless all of you start speaking English whatever he learns here in 4 months is undone in the 2 months at home um I think cooperation and pulling in the same direction uh is very important and i think i would expect that of um if i was a student i would expect that my parents and my teachers pulled in the same direction spoke the same language i think i also expect parents not to be anti teacher not to be disloyal to the school and not to talk to their children about teachers and look down upon the profession they need to support the school the school's values the school's rules and uh, i think they also need to communicate regularly to phone emails physically at ptms um, we also need to know something more about their children just as they need to know about their children from us in the four months that they are with us we also need to know something about what their child is at home um and i that reminds me of a story where um a parent kept from us the fact that the boy was living on one kidney he was born with one kidney that was taken you know they were scared that the boy wouldn't get admission if this was revealed and many months down the line when the boy had to have a 
ultrasound because of some problem, we discovered they had hidden this fact. Now, I would expect the parents not to hide any medical facts from the school authorities because this could lead to serious problems um, later on. Um, I also think that parents, I would expect parents to have to follow the school's reporting order. There is no point of a parent picking up a phone and phoning the headmaster at 10 o'clock at night about a problem. Because in any case, the headmaster would have to come back to the housemaster or the tutors or the teacher. I think there's a certain order of reporting in every school. And I think we would expect parents to follow that order. It's best to first approach the person who's directly in touch with your child, let's say the teacher or the tutor, later on the housemaster. And finally, right in the end, if your queries and requests and your emails are not being answered, by all means, go up to the Board of Governors. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think um, um, what, do, what do parents want of teachers? They want us to teach well and deliver marks. Uh, most of them are quite cognizant of their children's abilities and they are reasonable with their expectations. As I said, all parents believe that their sons and daughters are God's gifts to school and that they can't do much wrong. However, when something goes wrong, I think we expect parents to understand that we teachers have another view of the child and they should accept what, what um, uh, we say. Uh, uh, I think also as a teacher, I would expect parents to be honest. We were very embarrassed sometimes when uh, letters of uh, requesting leave would come to us and stating something medical or something serious in the family, only to find later on that there was a golf tournament or there was a you know, 50th wedding anniversary of their grandparents. Now, that again starts the, the, whole, whole, the whole issue of honesty starts from home. And then it becomes an unfair thing. The teacher, the, the headmaster gave leave for a, for a wedding. And therefore, a precedence is set that somebody else who wants a bona fide leave doesn't get it. So we, we require honesty from parents just as they look for honesty in us. Um, I know that there was a boy in my house once who had to undergo a very emergency appendicitis operation. And the boy was on the table and I being his housemaster signed the document saying that he had to be opened up. At which time I got an emergency call from the parents in Delhi saying, don't touch the boy, we are coming to fetch him and take him to our family doctor. And they expected me to be, you know, to click my heels and uh, uh, acquiesce to that, to that demand. I said, sorry, at the moment I am the person on the spot and I'm gonna take a decision because It'll take you six hours to get here and six hours your son may be dead. And we opened him up and the appendix burst in the kidney tray. Of course, they were very glad that I took the decision. But, you know, this is expectations from teachers which are unreasonable. They don't know the situation. Um, uh, what else can I, can I say? Um, how do parents know what is happening in school? The only way that they do know this is what their children tell them at home. Um, and sometimes, you know, how they're treated, are they treated fairly, how their teachers teach, how their teachers um, talk to them. They talk about good teachers and bad teachers. Um, sometimes a child is miserable at home and is un and treated unfairly. This again is picked upon, you know, um, is he victimized? Is he heard? Uh, you know, it's important that parents communicate what happens at home to us. Uh, otherwise, how would we know? Uh, in, the, in the end, I, my, my, my word of advice is that parents are our clients uh, and we must be able to negotiate and manage their expectations with kindness and with patience and handle them with respect. After all, they've entrusted them, the most precious children, their most precious children in our hands. I always looked at it like this. They've given their kids to us. And um, we have got to uh, do our best, uh, not to hurt these children, but to make these children uh, advance and grow into their full potential. And just like a good doctor uh, would never disrespect his parents, I think a good teacher must listen to uh, parents and, um, and, and try and even if they disagree, I think there need to be some sort of respect um, uh, in, 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 how, in how they do it. Um, because the more parents expect of us, 
the higher we stand in their eyes. If they expect a lot from a teacher, it just enhances the teacher's importance. If a teacher was poor, who would expect much from him? So just because a lot is expected, a teacher shouldn't be upset. It's actually a compliment to him. Um, with that, Subayu, I want to pass this over to you. I'm very uh, sorry that my lights uh, and lecture failed from here. I hope um, that, that made some sense. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for that wonderful introduction to this topic. We could not have asked for a more balanced view of what the expectations are on either sides. And so you know the phrase, we have to be pulling in the same direction. Uh, exactly the thought process behind the creative that went out with the invitation. A system of gears where all the gears are not moving in unison is always inevitably going to break down. So thank you so much for the wonderful introduction, ladies and gentlemen. The next speaker on this topic is Achin Bhattacharya. Achin is the founder and CEO at Notebook. A chartered accountant by training, Achin was a director at Deloitte prior to starting Notebook. He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in GE, PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. Achin is a fellow of the ICAI and a member of CPA Australia and CPA Ireland. He is also the recipient of the prestigious Indian Achievers Award. Achin is an avid reader and a passionate traveler with keen interests in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He is a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce, and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He is also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies. Achin, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, should I am audible? Now, good evening. Uh, once again, welcome all of you to today's session. So parents provide children with their first learning experiences of be it eating, sitting, walking, coloring, writing. Since parents help their kids establish their basic developmental milestones in life, there's no doubt that they can also help and contribute a lot to ensure that, that their children do well at school. So therefore, reinforcing a strong parent-teacher partnership would be an indisputable strategy. Of course, it, it, it goes a long way to guarantee that the child is supported all along in his or her learning journey. It seems it's a no-brainer that a positive parent-teacher relationship contributes to children's success. However, it's not as easy as it seems. And sometimes it's very human. There are teachers, a child will love from day one. And on the other hand, there are teachers, a child might take time to open up. Parents also have their own individual liking and disliking. They're more comfortable with some teachers, some cases, they need time to open up. But whatever the case, we cannot deny the fact that a child's teacher is the second most important person in his or her life. And empathizing, communicating, and cooperating with each other between the parent and the teacher can help make the relationship a very strong and rewarding one. And also it helps the child feel good about school and motivates him or her to be successful in school because it demonstrates to the child that he can trust the teacher because his parents also trust the teacher. So this positive relationship makes the child feel like they're all important people in his life because as we discussed, the teacher is the second most important people, of course parents, of course after parents. But the child feels that people who are most important in his or her life are working together for his benefit. You know, that's very reassuring, very emotionally satisfying for the child. The best tip for school success is to make sure that parents and teachers are working as allies. Sometimes, though, it can seem as though there's an invisible line, invisible chalk line, drawn through the middle. 
on the home side there are things that the parent knows about the child the kind of help the child needs during home work session uh, social development interaction with siblings peers on the other hand in school there are a lot of things that the teacher knows about them it's very unfair for parents to assume that only the only they know their child i think bites are give some wonderful references the help that the child needs at school the kind of interaction with with other class other students these are things that the teacher knows best now this information on both sides can be combined to create a much better wholesome understanding about the child and it will not only benefit the child but also significantly because of course if it helps in optimizing learning outcome it's it also ensure that it it relieves parents also of the stress it helps teachers also a long way it goes a long way it mutually beneficial to all stakeholders of the ecosystem as i was reading about a, a very interesting research project harvard family research project it provides tips on maximizing school to family relationship and according to professor sara lawrence which has a publication called light foot in the essential conversation what parents and teachers can learn from each other and she has a very interesting uh, take on it one very a uh, very interesting quote that i read which i wanted to share with all of you was that there is no more complex and tender geography than the borderland between families and schools it it goes on to show how sensitive this relationship is how important this relationship is it actually defines the trajectory growth trajectory of a child and according to the author a child and i think it's it, it, it is illustrated with a very beautiful and very practical example based on based on a global research after talking to so many parents and 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 child and teachers it says that if a child is doing great in art but having trouble in math and when the parent is having a conversation with the teacher it's important it's important not to avoid difficult conversations so a parent might might ask of course that if there are any after school programs for for, for the child to pursue art but it's equally important for the parent to tackle the issue with regard to the child's weakness in math because the objective is supporting the whole child and the author feels that the conversation between educators and families should be accessible understandable and actionable and and this particular research as i was discussing very nicely very nicely defines starts with supporting then construction meaningful conversations and ultimate objective being students progress and of course few very basic things but very important things like being persistent in reaching out and communicating with each other adapting to online as well as in person communication no the other very important aspect is continuous and constant engagement cross cultural communication wherever required developing a systematic approach when when all stakeholders are involved be it the principals teachers parents and also using a very data driven approach which is which is very impartial very objective very faceless using data student data to guide conversations with families about students strength and areas for improvement because very often parents being emotionally invested it's very difficult for them to come to terms with any kind of feedback which may be a very constructive feedback but which which you know highlights the areas where the development is needed so very data driven impartial 
approach, a very professional approach. I think I think that that's very very important because family engagement is is not a single event. It's a shared responsibility in which regular two way communication actually actually ensures that the student is on track to meet grade level requirements. I was reading about a very wonderful initiative, which which takes place every year in Boston, called Countdown to Kindergarten, in which Boston Children Museum hosts an annual kindergarten celebration, where children and families can take a bus ride to the museum, talk with teachers, and get information about enrollment and preparation. So this whole interaction takes place in a museum setting. Also, a recent study by Matthew Kraft and Todd Rogers looked at the effectiveness of one sentence individualized messages from teachers to parents of high school students. And the simple intervention decreased the percentage of students who failed drastically. And when we say one line communication, a very objective data driven communication with an action point. Now, parent teaching. Now, the other aspect which is which I wanted to discuss and which I think is very important. What we have seen over last, you know, more than one and a half year during the pandemic, we have seen parent teacher relationship going through a lot of change. As parents had to step into the shoes of educators and ensure that they take care of their children, schooling at home. As teachers. Continuously ensuring their presence online, ensuring that students don't lose a precious academic year. So it's important to ask that what insights into parent-teacher relationship has the pandemic provided so far? We have all heard the adage: it takes a village to raise a child. But I think this was actually put to test when the pandemic forced school closures. Parents took on a role. For which most of them were unprepared, and so were teachers. For many of them, it was very difficult. Suddenly, from from you know classroom physical teaching to suddenly going online, especially for for students in junior classes, undoubtedly very taxing. So I was reading about a web-based survey that took place in Alberta, where volunteer parents and teachers were interviewed in 2020, and they were asked few questions. The study found. That pandemic both strained as well as strengthened parent-teacher relationship, and there is evidence that educators in Alberta they feel that they are increasingly initially they felt that they felt a lot of challenges. We all know that natural disasters at times they bring people together. Now, when the pandemic forced school closures, emergency remote teaching meant. Many parents were involved beyond monitoring child's progress, which they usually do. And findings from Alberta study. Now, during the study, around more than one thousand parents were surveyed that to respond to a questionnaire. Roughly around five fifty teachers were also, you know, sent a questionnaire and they responded. Many of them were personally interviewed. Forty five percent of parents reported. and this is very important i found this very interesting and insightful in line with what we have been discussing in this forum again and again 45% of parents reported their understanding of the demands of teachers and their respect for them increased so when they had to themselves you know up to some extent perform the role of educators at home they felt that they understood the teachers much more they understood the challenges that teachers go through among teachers 74% reported they knew the families better students families much better the pandemic increased empathy and patience equally compelling however was that 43% of parents reported decreased interaction with teachers and only 18% reported improvement in relationship with teachers so it's very it's very If you look at the study, there are a lot of apparent contradictions. Now we must remember that both parents and teachers make assumptions 
about others. That may be based on differing values and expectation and incomplete or downright false information. At times, actually, parents may not be aware about the kind of challenges that a teacher is facing. Now, also initially, for instance, a common concern among teachers during early stages of the pandemic was that at times parents were non-communicative. Now, parents admitted that there are a lot of other challenges to deal with initially. Job losses, in many cases, ailments, losing their near ones. So initially, for, for many of them, it was difficult to focus. Now, but during this, this phase, when there was, a, there was a change of role, there was a role reversal, the parents had to actually step into, and, and they saw what the children were actually doing. So this particular state is something that psychologists have de described as boundary ambiguity. Because the roles in this particular case were not very clearly defined initially. And central to the problem was that teachers who understood that what the families are going through, they couldn't actually press beyond a point. And parents also felt that they understood that at times they could not motivate and support their own children the way teachers did. And so, so in many cases, some parents dealt with boundary intrusion by giving up schools to save the family dynamic. Now, this kind of role reverse, this kind of, you know, this kind of role ambiguity, because naturally, a natural elevation of parents' role, parents trying to step into the role, role of teacher and facing challenges. I think this also ensured that not a mutual respect. I think one thing that Moritz has spoke of, that at times it's perfectly natural for parents and teachers to have different opinion on a particular issue and that's completely natural. But I think what is also equally important is mutual respect, empathy, to understand each other's perspective. Now, During this phase, when parents sat beside their children and watched them complete schoolwork, it actually opened their eyes because for the first time, many of them actually, you know, came to term with how, how their children are as learners. Many admitted that report card comments and parent-teacher interview discussions all of a sudden made a lot more sense. They could actually see it for themselves that yes, the kind of comments you have been getting in report cards, how and from where are they coming? They could understand, okay, these are real life challenges. Because without directly witnessing their children engaged with school, parents may not really know their children as students, as teachers do. Now, what next? A common assumption is that effective parent-teacher relationship depends primarily on parent-teacher interaction. However, in many cases, what happens at home between a parent and a child is also important. Parents may choose to protect their relationship with their child by at times, say, for example, a child who is, who is kind of avoiding homework, backing off from extracurricular activities. Now, many parents, of course, they value education. But at times, and I think in this forum, uh, one, one of our eminent educators, I remember a few sessions back, an excellent comment that how many parents at times do they have the courage to stand up to their children and tell them that, yes, this is wrong. Even if that means, even if that means being strict with them, even, even if that means telling them. Now, during this pandemic, parents they themselves could understand that, that, yes, these are the kind of challenges that teachers are going through. And I think a lot of, lot of you know, mutual respect and appreciation for each other's work. Also, there's a difference between informing and communicating. While, you know, one is just keeping the parent informed. The other is how much interest the parent is actually taking. Now, 
we all agree that while parents and teachers are part of the village necessary to raise the child as we discussed i think after last one and a half years after what they have gone through in the pandemic they do not necessarily perform the same roles there's been a, there's been a shift there's been a change and it actually took a virus to help us see the value in honoring a division of labor so i think these are some thoughts that i wanted to share i thank all of you for giving me a patient hearing a very wonderful panel here today and i really look forward to hear from them on this important topic over to you shubhai thank you achin thank you for that wonderful presentation and taking us through the various parts of the world and the various studies that have been done on this particular aspect well ladies and gentlemen as achin mentioned we do have a fantastic panel lined up for you but before we go on to the discussion a little bit about us here at notebook we at notebook are a net tech product we produce short crisp videos pertaining to the school curriculum now these videos come in handy in two cases one is when you as teachers want to teach a topic and need something to give your students a more visual introduction these short videos can be played within your class whether online or offline and be used to provide your students with that extra visual stimulus that you need to get their engagement going the second use case is when months later the student is sitting at home and needs to revise that particular topic they have access to the same videos on their personal devices be it a laptop or a smartphone they can watch the videos over and over again until they get a completely firm grasp on the topic i'm going to play a short snippet of one of the notebook videos for you so that you would know exactly what the notebook videos look like the value of goods consumed should also equal to the value of goods produced now let's explain this in terms of a two sector closed economy a simple economy is a closed economy there is no interference from external markets we are only looking at goods and services provided by households and factor services provided by firms or producers the expenditure on goods and services made by households gives the total value of goods generated in the economy the income of firms is also the total value of goods produced by the producers in the economy this is the simplest economy possible where it is also assumed that consumers do not save there is no government or trade it just helps highlight some essential features of the functioning of an economy the value of goods produced in an economy can therefore be a summation of all values of all finished goods produced in the economy this is called the value added method and is one of the three ways by which gdp can be calculated others are income and expenditure methods that we shall discuss later on let's focus on the value added approach for now in the product or value added method the market value of all final goods produced in an economy is considered final goods are ready for sale and hence their value can be included in the calculation of gdp well ladies and gentlemen that was a very short snippet of just one of the notebook videos If you head over to our website www.notebook.school or use our mobile apps for Android and iOS you would find more than 10000 such videos at your disposal. Well with that done it is now my privilege to introduce the wonderful speaker that we have with us to discuss today's topic. Mrs R Bhuvana is a highly talented skilled and dynamic education leader with 23 years of experience in the K12 segment. She has a proven track record in maintaining excellent educational environment increasing students academic standards and in collaborating with school communities she has worked as a teacher vice principal and principal in various schools in punjab and noida she is an expert in school management and implementation of guidelines to run the school to its optimum efficiency levels she firmly believes in lead by self example service before self is a guiding principle honesty integrity user loyalty and dedication towards her profession 
and the institution are the few parameters which she has never compromised throughout her career. Her enthusiasm, initiative, and innovative attitude are what she has sailed her and through all challenges. She holds degrees in physics, an MSc, an MPhil in nuclear physics, an MSc EE, a B.Ed, and is currently pursuing a PhD. She also has various certificates and training that she has undertaken, like the NCCC certificate, and she's also an expert in MIE, online teaching, and mental maths. She started working at the Shivali Public School in Ropar, Punjab, in the year 1997. She then moved on to the Riot International School in Punjab in 2007, before joining the Gem Public Se Senior Secondary School in Mohali as the principal. She is currently working as a principal in Noida International Senior Secondary School. She is also a CBS resource person for the COE of Noida. Ma'am, thank you so much for sparing the time to be here with us today. We are looking forward to having a great discussion with you. Allow me to stop my share and switch on my camera so that we can take this discussion forward. Once again, a very good evening and thank you for being here. Good evening to everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Um, now my first question to you is, nowadays parents have become extremely demanding in terms of expecting the teachers to always be available, give their children the individual, uh, you know, individual attention that they feel that they deserve. And these often are extremely taxing. How do you handle these expectations? Um, you have to see the parental expectation as an aspect of parental attitudes and are the hopes and aspiration the parents might have for their children. In terms of, for example, the educational achievements, um, occupational statuses, etc. So nine thing I feel that parents expecting from the school, number one, the safety of the child. Number two, the quality of teaching. And the quality of teaching should be high so far the parents are concerned. And the second most important um, wish, wish list, you can say. And the curriculum, what kind of curriculum important to be a uh, good one. And uh, of course, the monetary gains and then expenses and what are the program related to games and their um, and sports facilities, online courses nowadays, it be the part of the thing and a steady material availability from the school side. Um, also, they are expecting extracurricular activity, even though it is called nowadays co-curricular activity. Yes, to what we are doing other than the curricular, which is the prescribed by the board and other facilities offered by the uh, schools. So I think these are the few parameters the parents are expecting from the good school. Wonderful, ma'am. But are these expectations always very rational and real? Or do you sometimes find them outlandish and difficult to manage? Uh, it's all depend upon the um, conditions and the time I, which uh, environmental, that time what they are expecting. For example, during this pandemic time, they're expecting to be online classes. It is obvious. It is fair enough. But now it is a uh, uh, hybrid mode is going on. But previously, even though we are not given as much as uh, technology oriented education previously, but that expression keep on now changing. So the hybrid mode of teaching will be now the norms. And I hope that going to be a uh, near future parameter for the, all the schools in near future. And sometime the curriculum, the pattern of the assessment, which we keep on changing. So there we may feel sometimes uh, we are not able to satisfy that much as expectation of the parents, which they are feeling uh, like in terms of um, assessment mode, various kind of assessment modes. Uh, there it can be slightly, uh, what uh, I feel that the parents' expectation cannot fulfill up to their marks. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, what about the other side? What are your expectations as a teacher from the parents? A teacher want the child should be in regular, uh, which is not possible. And teachers also expect from the parents that they should be little disciplined. Uh, the discipline in the sense values could be inculcated. 
um, because it is not a part of teacher to be taken care of uh, discipline as well as curriculum other things. So they expect parents should cooperate to uh, inculcate values from the home, which can be carried to the school or from the school to the home that can be taken care of the thing. And of course, as uh, Philip sir told already, the expectation of parents about the spoken English and the language are the thing, unless the parents is not going to speak at home, uh, even we are repeatedly telling at home uh, in the school, it's not possible to fulfill the thing. So my teacher expectation always uh, uh, from the parents' cooperation uh, regarding this matters. Thank you so much, ma'am. I uh, just wanted to kind of that's upon a particular point that you just raised about the values that they inculcate. Now, in a class of 50 or in a school of 2000 students, you have 2000 family values, family backgrounds that you're also dealing with. How do you kind of match them to the value system that you have following, you're following at school? Some of the value system is universal. That universal value system to be inculcated, which we have to expect. It's maybe vary from the, as you told, from the background, other thing, it may be going to vary, but some uh, value system will remain universal, like punctuality is remain universal, whether you are coming from the different background, other thing. Honesty is a um, uh, universal uh, value system. So you cannot omit such kind of uh, universal value system, which you can inculcate from the school side also, and we expect from the parent side to be fulfilled and that is the one of the expectation from our teachers so this is a few parameter this is one or two i am giving example of course there are n number of um, uh, value system which is universally accepted by everyone as a human being like a, um, one more you can see that um, this environmental uh, consciousness it should be universal. It's not only for the school to be included or this particular family or this particular region will going to be followed. You know, this will be for collective measure. It's not one person show to, to be taken care of the environment, our planet to save the way at, at okay. So that should be, we are expecting from the parents to be cooperate for this kind of values or inculcate there from the childhood. Mama, I completely agree that there is a universal value system, but that example that you gave was so apt that environmental consciousness. Now, you have students who are learning in school not to litter, not to throw things outside of a dustbin. And they would go back home and often find their parents indulging in behavior that completely go the other way, right? In, in such a situation where perhaps the value system is not so universally understood. Another very typical example would be something like gender inclusion, right? How people talk about genders, how men talk about women at home often impact what a student comes to school with as a value system. There, ma'am, what are your expectations from the parents? What would you want them to change? And are these articulated? Uh, as you told, one point is uh, gender equality. It's not going to be inculcated only from one side. Of course, it should be again and again repeated from the parent side also. It is not only to teach the daughters how to behave. And uh, of course, they have to teach the son how to behave the, the whole. And of course, the teachers along with the parents during PTM, they can interact what their expectation from the school side and what is the expectation from the parent side. And that can be communicated properly uh, time to uh, time and again in various mode, uh, maybe through activity, maybe through circular, maybe through orientation program for the parents in various mode, you have to inculcate again and again. Once you are telling uh, what your vision and mission of your school, that's going to be carried to the further. So that will help definitely to uh, slight change, even though tremendous miracles are not going to change in one day. Uh, the for long, uh, it's going to be definitely going to bring the changes, uh, both the parent side as well as students and the expectation from the uh, teachers also from the school side. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, during the last 18 months, the pandemic and online education with parents often sitting in the same room, has these expectations changed? Have they become better, become worse? It's both the way. You can say in both the way. It will be sometimes it's prones as well as con. Uh, because the parents now, they are uh, virtually uh, visualizing what is going on inside the class. So their uh, entrance with that uh, online mode of teaching is a lot. By giving, um, helping the child in assessment mode, 
and um, interfering the class class itself and just a lot of it with that but of course there are a lot of uh, advantages also there during this pandemic the parents expectation they come to know what the school exactly doing do thing which is not able to communicate in various mode they are not given that much uh, important for the children study initially but during this time they get enough time when they are sitting along with the child so they involve along with their um, kids for performing any activity and to help the teachers to how to carry on the thing because physically teachers are not present so only the parents are there so they will be uh, both advantage and disadvantage of the thing which we need to balance of course thank you so much ma'am uh, just coming to my last question uh, last session that we had we had somebody from the ntpc plant school in kanda and uh, what we understood is a very different environment exists in the plant schools because the parents and the teachers they socialize beyond just the academic requirements of the child it's not just a parent teacher meeting but the the parent of the child that you are teaching is perhaps your neighbor or just comes to the same club as you ma'am do you think that for the socializing between teachers and parents could lead to better education or inputs for the child or you think that the two should stay in their separate areas and not interfere that much no yeah, i feel uh, it's involving the parents is a better um, for each activity because uh, they are uh, all the um, in fact the school is not only for the teachers and students because after 6 hours or 8 hours they will be going to be this home only so it is better for to involve the parents and get their help and get their suggestion and of course you have to be seen according to the uh, the child capability other thing so definitely i feel that uh, uh, taking their view point and their suggestions will be more going to benefit to the betterment of the school my point of view mom uh, how do you manage the helicopter parents in such a situation where you are seeking their advice seeking their so, we always call the parents in the by room and then we discuss the a pro and cause of each one uh, 80% when you explain everything what i observe 80% or even sometime it is 90 plus also when you sit along with them and explain why we are doing what we are doing and what uh, way it is going to be to be benefited for the child as well as the parents they understand the thing so it definitely going to be that is a communication gap sometime uh, the way they it is presented to the parents but once they are sitting along with the, across the uh been through with the teachers or with the principal or with the management wherever it is so it will be communicated in a proper way then definitely going to be taken care of this reckons of the parents or any kind of parents which is in the in the school scenario thank you so much thank you so much for the wonderful answers i personally learned a lot and i'm sure uh, every teacher here and a lot of them are parents as well have got a lot to take away thank you so much for sparing the time to be here today absolute privilege thank you sir thank you now invite ochin to do the official vote of thanks ochin you have quite a bit to thank for so over to you i think a wonderful session i must appreciate ambar sir uh, thank you as always for giving us a great start and i think you also very very wonderfully explained the role of educators in in a boarding school setting and how it is different from a day school and i think uh, some incidents that you narrated you know where 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 so self explanatory that it really when you know, provided us with great clarity on the topic and it's very touching as well to see the kind of responsibility the kind of ownership that educator state you give your own example it's a wonderful example so i think thank you so much sir for for enlightening us With your with your wisdom, I think some great examples. Uh, Ma'am, thank you so much for attending this and for for gracing the platform. Good day, ma'am. I think thank you so some much. Wonderful, some thank wonderful, some wonderful. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Pleasure is all ours. Some wonderful points uh, you explain, including uh, what parents expect. I think that's very very important to. to to first understand with we'll unless until uh, parents and teachers they understand each other's perspective naturally you know the challenges are much much more so i think the first step towards building this amount of mutual respect and trust 
which goes a long way to optimize learning outcome and benefit the student is understanding what parents expect. And I think you very, very, very beautifully, you know, summed it up, you know, point wise. And also, of course, uh, with with now with, with post pandemic, the kind of digital teaching that we are looking at, the kind of hybrid model we are looking at, embracing change, inculcating values. The other aspect you mentioned, ma'am, is is so important. And I think it works both ways. Students, you know, receiving a proper value education from parents at home and coming to school with it and ensuring that they share those best practices with, with, with their friends as well as the learning at school and going home and making their parents proud. So I think the importance of values, you know, undoubtedly is something that we all agree. And of course, the last point that you mentioned, uh, the importance of PTM interaction and proper communication. Yeah, the school should facilitate always uh, the active involvement of the parents for the development of the kids, what I always feel. This is something parents want very uh, dearly these days uh, exactly. to involve them because of the after this pandemic, they are uh, contribute a lot to their parents' uh, classrooms. And the school should let them print in their ideas that help them contribute the um, development of their kids, what I always feel. PTM is uh, one of the wonderful tools way to interact with the parents. Of course, in other way, by getting them their ideas, suggestions, um, uh, what is uh, other, uh, the school can operate many programs for the parents. Involvement of parents is the most important facility the school should have to provide. I completely agree, ma'am. I completely agree. And considering the fact that educators, you know, esteemed educators like you, are also parents. I think I'm sure that educators they do understand and empathize with what parents are going through, the kind of challenges, their expectation. Uh, I think it is also equally important that parents also show that kind of uh, I think uh, maturity and respect in order to ensure that it's a win-win proposition. And I'm sure after what they have gone through, because you know social circles, you know extended family conversations, and I'm sure many many of you would agree with me. It has been a frequent topic and we have seen that after the kind of challenges in the last one and a half years, I've seen parents, you know, appreciating the role of teachers even more than what it was. So I think we had a wonderful session. I thank all of you. I thank members of the esteemed audience as well for your time here. I look forward to your active participation in the coming session. Thank you. Take care and goodbye. Thank you, Achan. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.